warmly welcoming you back to this ThinkTechWise show, Human Humane Architecture. This happening to be our 322nd episode you're watching. Hopefully you're watching them all. And today, me, your host, Martin Despain, is uh, not with my co-host, Soto Brown. He's coming back soon, which we'll tell you in a bit. And we have two guests who are actually more than guests. They have been guests and uh, they're close to being co-hosts. Um, but then you would have three hosts and only no guests, I guess. So that doesn't make sense. So we have Richard Lowback with us and Bandit Kanistakon. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Martin. <laughs> Hi. So it's so good to have you back. So um, it's been too many years, Rich, when we had you on the show. It seems like four or five years. So we want to catch up and we want to do this um, with a framework of what we have all learned, um, especially in the very recent like two weeks. And this, uh, Bandit, you decided to kick off and to frame it literally and figuratively the best would be this picture. So you guys tell us about where what are we looking at where are we sitting in this picture here which is not where you are at the moment anymore okay rich you want to say that well i'm i'm if we're looking at the upper left picture i know what that was and what we were looking at we were looking oddly enough straight at the capitol building which forced me to come to Hawaii in the first place. When was that, Rich? Oh, I don't know. 19 something, 60? <laughs> yeah. 19 something. But... Yeah. <laughs> so, and um, at this photo, uh, Rich was at the Queen Hospital. Um, that's more like a, a, a lounge that we hang out. Yeah, and uh, Rich, force is kind of a funny way, as you are way to call it. I would say more it lured you out to Hawaii than forced you, because um, what what you you shared with us in in several shows in the past felt very less forced, but more natural kind of flowing. And when actually the the two of us, you and I, were at this moment when I took the picture. And, you know, when you were at Queens, it wasn't your favorite place because it was very deprived of what we what we see here. And when we were moving to this place here, actually to waiting for getting you going, moving on where you are currently, um, this was a space that you liked a lot for several reasons. And why is that? Why did you prefer that over your room where you were before we went there? Well, I like the background, all the greenery sort of overlapping the roof. And and then the building itself is nice and simple and uh, supported by columns and uh, all sort of fitting together. Now I see myself with, with some kind of a, of a, of a, looks as though I'm, I'm shooting an arrow. Uh, to to your right, <laughs> but yeah. I don't I don't think I was shooting an arrow. <laughs> so that we're puzzled, not even. that puzzled yeah. me a little bit. Yeah, and the the picture also and and the story about this um this area which is the government area the civic center that you were very engaged with professionally as a planner. Is also uh, DeSoto says hi to you guys, and he wants to be back with you guys as well, uh, starting in spring break. Because when I told him about uh, Richard, when you, um, when I tried to ask someone if they know where the Frank Fozzi government building is, um, you were faster than anyone else giving the explanation. Do you remember that, or you want to re? Uh, paraphrase how you explained where that Frank Fazi building is positioned? I'd be happy to do that. If you if you take Kapiolani Boulevard and go in a northerly direction, I hope that's correct, northerly, uh, you come to uh, a, a, an intersection that's very critical in knowing about where the Frank Fozzi building is. 
So you go, you cross that street, and then to your right is the Frank Fozzi building. And the one of the things that was unique in terms of getting things done was that we showed that to a number of people who said, why don't we why don't we enlarge upon the the situation by by cutting off Kapilani Boulevard and just moving straight through into the into the sort of park like setting around this the the city building. And so uh I think it was one of the mayors at that time who thought it was a good idea to do that. And they did that. And then uh, from then on, we could easily, we could go straight into the, to the sort of the, the guts of the, of the park like setting of the of all the federal the federal and state and city buildings and so that's where we suddenly were were at does that exactly and that makes total sense and in fact the the harvest from that sort of seeds you were you know growing there is what you are looking at in this in this picture here because otherwise we would see bonded you you said that in the discussion we had before you would see the same sort of um uh, density of urbanism of uh of downtown the commercial downtown would have basically spread over right and yep. would have you know made kind of suffocated the capital within the kind of predator capitalism of the commercial urbanism, right? Right. But now it's become like a park, like like Richard say. I think that's wonderful. Exactly. And so this is what the soda thinks too. So I'm telling you now on air because it gives you less time for Mr. Low saying no, as if you would ever do. That the soda wants to talk with you about that, and 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 when I mentioned the word, the name Kevin Lynch, that will get you going. But we save that for later because that's for these shows. So uh, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, in basically, you know, showing it uh, the same but but differently. Um, we see Waikiki and its sort of uh, commercial. Um, you know, congestion, we can say, and tourism is our main income and economy. That's why it's, you know, commercial as well. And we see, uh, uh, Rich, you always say, humble as you are, that you were not a team of the architecture of the capital, but the planning part around it. But please elaborate a little bit um, on the 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 atmosphere and the notion of the the architecture of the capital itself where we are standing in the top picture of what we're looking at well exactly the 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 top picture that we're looking at with the shiny floor is uh, is of course the state capitol building interior and uh that I'm not sure how to put this, but it it put a shine, as it were, on the on the Capitol building itself, so the people could visit the Capitol building and and kind of enjoy the the feel of it being one of our most important buildings. Just by being there and looking up and around at it. Yeah, it feels very public. You know, that's you know one thing I see. You know, it opens for everyone. Uh, very democratic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's as they say here in Hawaii, it's sort of hang loose, right? <laughs> and and hang, hang Loose gets us to the next slide, which is also what I put behind me. And talk about Hanging Loose, Rich. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I wasn't being hung. <laughs> I was hanging. Enjoy <laughs> not. So, this was so this this was a country where I was I, I found this this kind of looks like a steel rope that allowed me to swing back and forth over the uh, park-like setting we were in. And uh, it sort of loosened up my uh, attitude toward the whole idea of government. Yeah, and it might have been bundling along your lines of your current research, might have been a robe out of uh, something from the coconuts. Might yeah. have not been steel, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just so like what we're trying. Yeah. yeah, what we're trying to say is that you know the probably to make something like architecturally the capital and and urbanistically the area around it more as nature uh, than architecture um, might need an attitude like we were demonstrating here. And this was actually not that many years ago. I would say like these four or five years ago. So you were at your young age of the beginning 90s at that point, Rich, just to remind you and everyone else about it. <laughs> I've got, what can I do but agree with that? It's just yeah, one, very, just one very of the... nice. <laughs> you know, and and you really get us going and and thinking about as the the show is called um, aging along agility. Um, let's go, Mister Low and Co. And and Co. is the next slide because I'm bringing into the discussion here from where I'm from and where our exotic escapism Susanna is uh, most of the time, unfortunately, without me. And this is around uh, the area of Munich and, um, and uh, also Mauka that we have there, the Alps. And share a little bit your, your memories of when you were there, Rich, in and around Munich. Oh, that's kind of jumping a few thousand miles. Uh, but, yeah, I found Munich to be a, a cousins of mine had spent some time as they were sort of maturing into the real world in Munich. And so somehow or other, the very name Munich has a feel to it that that I kind of like. Yeah, and put it into the context of climate and culture, you see that white stuff there on the mountains. This is what we um, at times have only on the big island on Mauna Kea, where we get snow, but we have it quite a bit, almost for half of the year up there high in the mountains there. So this means everything that makes us be, you know, Shaka, which is also a... Uh, uh, Related to Frank Fazi, by the way, because he used that for his campaigning as as a logo. So Shaka and Hang Loose that we can do all year round. We can only do for a few months uh, in the year back in the temperate where I'm from. And up there at the top left is a dear friend of ours. And for Suzanne, he's sort of her bonus dad because she uh, her dad passed away from a heart attack to young at age. So. Um, not that he could ever be replaced, uh, uh, but uh, this this gentleman here, his name is Stefan Rick or or Rich, as your first name is his last name, depending on how you pronounce it. He's originally from Hungary, and he's our last urban farmer in Suzanne's hometown, and um, he is doing, you know, being out there, out and about in nature, as you were doing in the in the previous picture. And it basically he's plowing his uh, you know land there, and 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 then um, it needs to be a lot of nurtured, which we don't have to do here because things just grow naturally all the time, you know, um, um, uh, a growing cycle um, of 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 twelve months and and twenty four seven. We don't have that here. As you see, Suzanne here, she has to irrigate it, and you have to put a lot more effort in. But next slide, it pays off. Because um, Stefan was able to do what uh, the almost impossible, because this is not a wine region, but he was able to grow and cultivate 
uh, wine and he makes his own wine out of it here. Cheers, Stefan here, where, you know, he's our urban farmer that provides us with the most awesome uh, grown vegetables and wine. And Bandit, you're very much into food as um, actually and also metaphorically as for, as for architecture. So both you guys, that makes you, you buddies, although you don't know each other in person yet, that way we introduce, you share a lot as far, in, as, far as these out and about nature guys who then sort of create things um, you know, from this background. But sometimes, you know, um, not necessarily just age related, which uh, Suzanne's sad example of her dad having passed away from a heart attack. So the heart is your is our pumps, and that gets us to the next slides and shows us what can sometimes happen to our pumps. So do you recognize yourself there, Rich, and when that was? Uh, I, I I do, and I'm 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 terribly impressed by the sheer good looks of that guy crumpled up in bed. <laughs> That's a couple we of weeks your ago. humor. <laughs> yeah, it was about two weeks ago where Simon, and it happened to, to Stefan Rich uh, over the last summer, the same situation where you both ended up having to go to um, uh, a system that then tries to take care of of your pump, and you were both, uh, you know, in hospital and needed to rest and needed uh, care, and that your pump gets back to which we, as we see you now, it has worked out. So uh, maybe it wouldn't have worked out. Gets us to the next slide. If uh, your next location would have been this, let's talk about this, guys. <laughs> Well, I don't know what? the building, and uh, I keep asking somebody near me, what is that building? And <laughs> I need to, I have this urge to know more about it. it it's sort of glassed in lanai's on that one, on this end closest to us. And then it's hard for me to see what some of the detailing of the other other parts of the building are, but it's it's a part of of, of Honolulu growing into the city that it seems to be becoming. Yeah. And you know, you remind us of our deficiencies because now we're all educators and like to be educated. So you taught us. We should have actually applied the sort of inside out versus outside in methodology. So if we would have shown and shared, and this is probably going to be good for many more shows. So we're going to work this into one of the next shows to make up for that. We didn't have it here. But if we would have shown you how this looks from inside, um, there's actually right now on the realtors, because I have to look for a new place. So I was looking for, you know, the, the, the advertisements that there are. There's actually a unit in there available. And it looks like very much like the ones you had in the previous slide at Queens. Do you remember how that was? Did, were you able to see anything outside, any tree or any nature or anything when you were in the hospital at Queens in your room? I doubt it. I, I think one is completely trapped <laughs> when he or she or they are uh, are. I don't want to use the word condemned because that's kind of mean, but are, are, are required to, to spend time in a hospital. It's very confining and, and with luck, one comes out of it better than when he went in. <laughs> that's so well said, but then imagine you come out of it better than you came came in, and then you move on and continue. And to be, I love that condemned. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you are condemned to actually then move in here into pretty much the same because you're lucky if you have that little hole in the wall uh, that is, uh, as they like to call it, a framed view. But you're most likely looking at this at another and a neighboring high rise. 
So you're like you said, as in most cities, you got this scenario and you're ignorant of where we actually are in the tropics and there's no hang loose and there is no shaka there. It's basically been, we can use an even more drastic term, you're, you're put in prison. So, and this is how many in your generation end up, they're shoved into these prison cells. And maybe every now and then they're all going to be taken down into a tour bus, drives them out to the Polynesian Culture Center, and then all the way back until the next trip. And until then, you're pretty much locked up in your prison cell. How about that? Well, it's, it's too true. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's not the only example. There's unfortunately more next slide. And, and this is what was, uh, who was your buddy from school back then, Bandit, um, Matt Loblet, wanted this to be featured in, in his reflections on the place that is his home too, because his wife, your friend, um, is, uh, Wendy, is, all, is from here. So he found this building very, very striking. And what were our reflections on that one, Rich, especially the detailing of it that you see in that corner up there? I don't know. I, I see uh, on the right side of that upper picture, I see this very unusual sort of composition of things sloped every way here and there. And, and I, I'm not at all sure what I'm looking at. I can tell you, Rich, um, that's ah. the building that instead of uh, using the sun shading to you know, protect the strong sunlight from coming in, they use it to protect the condensing unit um, instead of um, oh. protecting human and the comfort of the human and the building temperature. Um, instead, they, they cover up the, the mechanical system instead. So that, that's something that um, we found it you know, kind of funny as an educator. <laughs> so. And as practitioners as well. Yeah. Uh -oh. So you would, uh, can you explain to us, because you've been here the longest of us, Rich, can you explain the, the term Lanai to us and the audience? Because people are watching this from all over the world. So what is, in a, lanai, what is a Lanai? A Lanai is a space reachable through doors, generally speaking, along the living room wall, so that you can, you can march out of the living room and you're on this, in this new space. And on two sides of that space, there, there's, there's nothing. I mean, it's just space. And, uh, and the, generally speaking, as far as, I picture the Vivian Eye. It's a uh, it's a smallish dimension vertically. It's like a room inside an apartment, and I think it's a tremendously valuable tool to have simply to enjoy the out of doors, which comes wafting in depending on the weather at the time, as well as the interior, which is more cozy and, and a little safer. Well, what a perfect definition, Bandit, right? What can we add to that? <laughs> and maybe from a tempered uh, guy's perspective, um, I, I could add that this also applies in some ways to what we call balcony, because um, you're also from California originally, you know, rich, and you have lived in the in the mainland in Chicago. So we do balconies there for these few times in the year that we also want to be out and about. But a lanai, I, I'm taught also by people from here, is, is more, right? That's actually the space that you want to be on and in uh, for actually most of the time of the year, right? And our dear friend Kurt Sandburn, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, um, Rich, you uh, was your neighbor when you grew up, right? 
he calls it stack is what actually buildings uh, should primarily pretty much be. Well, I think the, the idea of a balcony is a good idea, except that it is, it, it's almost never big enough to do anything on. And if you, if you wish to sit out in open space for dinner, a lanai should be large enough to accommodate the table and any number of chairs, depending upon how many people are going to enjoy that being out of doors. Um, so it's it's a little unique in, in, in how it functions. Being out of doors and indoors simultaneously. Yeah. And if we go to the next slide, although we have little time left, we're almost at the end of exciting 28 minutes. But this is another building that they do for people um, in your generation. And, and it has none of these. I mean, the others were sort of cynically, we, because we all had our, we were wondering, they're so tiny, maybe a person could stand on them with one foot, like a flamingo. But that's sort of a joke. They weren't, as Bundet, you explained. But this one here is not even trying at all to have any. So you would, why would you want to be in Hawaii if you end up, you know, um, unless uh, Bundet, which we will talk a lot more along in many other volumes as you guys take each other around and you want to be out and about and say, let's go, Mr. Lowell. Um, here, there is no such thing because you're mostly, you're not going anywhere. You're stuck in your hermetic, hut, uh, prison room, and so that's not what one wants, right? And not to end on a depressing, maybe you go to the next slide and see if there's uh, something. Yeah, that's uh, this lifts up the spirit, and that's how we want to pick up from where uh, we will have to leave now next week. But very quickly, as an appetizer, what are we looking at, guys? Looking at a, a, a piece of Queen Emma Gardens, which is one of the one of the great residential buildings in the United States, so so far as I my limited awareness goes. But as you can see, we're sitting outdoors, absolutely outdoors, and we're sitting, and yet we're sitting on benches and looking at each other and the surrounding pools of water that was to me one of the one of the wonders of queen emma gardens and its designers wow very po very well put most poetically rich as always so hold that thought for another week, because then we're going to be back picking up from there again. And until then, keep watching us. You see the accumulated viewership down there. And please support us by donating us. Uh, hit the donating button down there, because that's how we keep this here running. Speaking, let's go, Mr. Lowe, and see you next week, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>